Hello world and welcome back to another episode of Beyond Reality. So, here we are, uh, ready to start uh, Greg Tech, I suppose. And before we jump into that, <laughs> I'd like to delay a moment. Um, I've got my rubber production all automated up here. So we've got the pressurized fluid conduits pulling out the sap from the rubber sack, sap sacks, sap sacks. Um, and outputting into our evaporator. I've gone through and redone all my cabling so um, we've got we've got cable running from in there all the way out to here and it's supplying it with charcoal and pulling out the the um, sticky resin so that that whole charcoal farm is coming in really handy. Um, I've moved my tanks out here and upgraded my uh, steam tank to uh, steel tank and uh, so yeah we've got what four million millibuckets and I pulled the creosote out here and just used the leftover iron tank parts to to build it out a little bit better um, we've got the farm set up I've gone ahead and you know stylized this up uh, wheat wasn't coming fast enough so I went ahead and installed some sprinklers um, but yeah we've we've got we've got another wheat farm so we've got a total of two wheat farms now I'm probably gonna have to redo this whole setup because it's probably more energy efficient to upgrade the farming unit rather the the farmer instead of making more of them and I didn't account for that in this design so these will probably be moving um, I'll probably find an agriculture area to set up at um, got some I moved my fields from over there to here um, and these are basically mostly crops that we're gonna that we need for potions should we need them at all uh, and you can see the sprinklers are creating this grass which I don't know I should just shut it off now because I'm not really we're not really doing Batania right now um, as you can see we've I've demolished our starter house which uh, kind of sad <laughs> Um, but I have started automating some bee stuff because we're, we're going to want to get into that. And I just kind of use the Bevo setup from his Beyond Reality. Um, works pretty good. I've, I've just been leaving it go to build up our drones for the various things. And then we're going to have to start crossbreeding them. Um, ooh, yes, we've got this one stacking now. So if we pull out our Bealizer let's see um, okay ah so what, uh, what I'm trying to get it get to is just getting these bees stable as you can see the um, the Queen's not matching exactly the drones so I gotta keep breeding those until the Queen matches the drones and then I can automate it so it's producing the exact same bees each time uh, well that's that's going slowly I did manage to get um, a marshy um, that doesn't have the poison effect and uses flowers so that's really nice I don't know kinda got lucky there now before we we bow out of Botania um, I did do some work up here and got got things going um, so not much has changed here you'll notice that the hydrangea towers are gone sadly uh, they were the source of my lag and now it's it's much more bearable up here uh, I went ahead and expanded all this out, got some more mana spreaders, finished up the endo flame setup, um, got the cakey muros set up, the same way as the um, the endo flames. It'll pop up cake and then it'll get placed. And all of the um, there's enough spreaders here to take care, keep up with those, so I can generate mana really fast. Um, I should probably get rid of this because I went ahead and created these corner. Um, pools that will feed the upper layer uh, and I installed some um, panes just so they're not and dropped them down another level so they're the coals just not sitting up top here uh, and so the big the big changes is uh, is up here this is kind of my my tribute to Botania um, as we as we leave the focus of the the episode for other areas um, so yeah, I've been doing some work up here. This is kind of the uh, the the crown royale, I guess, of of the Botania the setup. So I I went ahead and created this this nice fountain. You know, some eating areas here. We can we can kind of 
chill and and talk. Hey guys, you know, except you know, I'm on a single player, so <laughs> uh, I'll just sit here and talk to myself, I suppose. And, you know, what's new? <laughs> um, redesigned this up here a little bit so I could get some vines because I wanted some um, wanted some greenery growing here. Uh, I've got. I've got some potion related stuff up here as well um, because I wanted to get you know some crops growing up here um, I've got my alchemy catalyst and my conjuration catalyst up here and they're being fed from below on those those posts and I've also got these guys up here so with all of these mana pools full um, I don't I don't have too many problems um, the uh, Nightshades and day blooms, they are pointing up here to this pool, and that pool's then feeding down into into all this stuff. Uh, I used some spectral blocks and buried my um, my my recharging spark, whatever you call it, distributor spark. I don't know, back behind the fountain. So it's it's really cool. Um, and then I set up these uh, trellises, I suppose, uh, just to kind of stylize these open areas. I wanted to keep keep some areas open up here, just because you know we're it's an outdoor kind of mod. So <laughs> I tried to make it as least obtrusive and keep the area functional as well. Um, over here's our our brewing and uh, ruinic altar. So. We can still do stuff, but uh, it looks, you know, it looks a lot nicer up here. It's it's just kind of a place to come out, relax, you know, chill. Um, but yeah, uh, so this is this is kind of the the grand finale of of Botania for this uh, for this series, I suppose. Um, so without further ado, my uh, my portal turned off because all these mana pools ended up drained due to RF. Um, but basically, I've got. I've got this area disconnected. The the Botania is more of a backup now, and it can generate a lot of power. So, so these farms <laughs> really aren't necessary anymore. But um, you know, it's always good to have. I'm sure, I have tons of cake right now. We could eat cake. So, uh, yeah, there's there's been further work. I've been working like mad to get this area back here cleaned up and ready for our ready for our journey. So. Yeah, here we go. I wanted to go for more of a, a more of a grungy factory look, so I, I kind of swapped out the uh, the factory blocks I had and, and rearranged it. Um, I've got conduits running all throughout here, feeding into our dimensional transceiver. And if we go like this, we can see our basically our main line here, and that runs out and feeds the um, the solar steam things. I've got a railcraft steam low pressure boiler so I've had this sitting around for a while I just haven't had a need to to put it so we're um we're also using the charcoal here so this is a real multitasker and we're actually we actually keep up with it so that's kind of that's kind of cool so um, it's generating steam we've got that full and we're we're ready to go with um, with using steam now over here I've moved all my Bronze Age stuff uh, and it's being fed by conduit, and I need to take those tanks down. I, I fixed this just before. Uh, thing to note, if you're going to use uh, fluid conduits to feed these, they need to be on the top or bottom. It was not working on the back. Uh, I don't know if that's a feature or what, but just to note, you want that, you want that running along the top and bottom. Um, but yeah, we've still got these guys going, and we've got it automated, and they're still producing steel. And I moved all of my all of my barrels over here, expanded it out for storage. But uh, I I really like to get to applied energistics. Now I was going to do applied energistics this episode, but um, there's some uh, there's some nice features here. So if you look up the pure Pure source disc quartz. Um, you can use an autoclave to basically produce one of these. You don't have to grow it. You don't have to have a crystal uh, crystal growth accelerator or anything. So this might be something to shoot for. So I was going to go ahead and try and break into Greg this episode and see how far I got. And 
you know, we'll use that to to kind of spur our um, our uh, applied energistics. And I'm going to this is our Ender I/O room. Um, you can see it's not quite complete here, but uh, it it does it does the job, and we're just keeping up with RF production here. So we're going to need to drop another Sterling generator in, or or something soon. But um, here's what I have of AE so far. I went ahead and started with the inscribers, and I've actually got these all automated. I can basically drop you know the necessary components diamonds gold silicone whatever and it'll distribute out to here and actually create the final product so we've already got some stuff here from testing but um we'll kind of we'll kind of hold off on that and and just get just get started with greg tech i suppose now i did create a um portal uh enhanced portals 3 the um, and we have back here the dimensional bridge stabilizer and what this is doing is running out to a swamp area so far and I guess we can go ahead and, and do that and what what I intend to do is um, build out this area for the IC2 crops uh, so we're in a swamp land we're 245 up and I've been just kind of reading through some tutorials and that's kind of your ideal growing area so yeah this is working really nice um, it's hooked up to a redstone timer so when it turns on it it sends us it unblocks the um, timer and three seconds later it'll send a pulse to turn back off the portal so we aren't wasting energy uh, and as you can see it works works pretty well um, there you go. So that's kind of all the developments um, thus far. Uh, this entry point is not going to work for much longer, so I'm going to have to figure something else out. Uh, just because when I come down here, I get confused which direction I need to go. <laughs> so I just need a uh, an entry point that is pointing a specific direction where there's nothing else, and then everything's that way. So uh, the problem is where everything's located. That's through this wall so I might I'd have to tunnel back I don't know we'll have to think about it um alright so I kind of have I'll leave a link to the document in um in the uh, in the post section below or the comment section below but I'm kind of following along with a um with a Greg Tech kind of walk along but um one of the first things we need to do is get a a steam turbine which is going to be made with a lot of things I figure what I'm gonna do is try and walk through as much of this as possible because Greg Tech gets kind of mm, I don't know how you want to put it but <laughs> we need to we need to make a lot of stuff um, and one of those things we need to make are you know electric motors which is going to require magnetic iron and all kinds of all kinds of goodies um, yeah so I think what we want is no we want the Greg Tech circuit please thank you that is not what we wanted okay well now now I've confused myself because I could swear maybe this isn't the right turbine basic steam turbine yeah it is uh, basic circuit we need well there has to be a way to create this without these machines hurry so here we are getting the confusion um, hmm so we're, we're definitely gonna need the basic steam turbine but I'm not sure how to get uh, Oh, okay, so we need the casings. And I think in order to do that, we need to make some molds. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and we do that how? Empty shape plate. So we're going to need gears, and we're going to need K 
casings. So we need an empty shape plate, and that's going to be the hammer and file, like such. And we're going to need two of them. And we're going to want casings, which are hammer here. And we're going to want small gears, which is hammer here. All right, so hey, we're off. <laughs> Oh boy, um, I feel like we've accomplished much. Let's see, so we need to make the N and chips. Uh, red eye, tin wire, tin plates. We better get some tin plates going, I suppose. We want to kind of be careful because our... Um, when we get a plate bending machine, we'll basically not have to use two in order to make oh, that didn't work out right we won't have to use two ingots to make um, a plate we'll only have to use one so so those should spit out to here I've already got a tin plate so let's wire cut that guy and one of the other machines we're gonna need is a, uh, a wire cutter ooh that's a terrible exchange rate <laughs> oh geez um, so Uh, actually, all we needed was a steel plate and a hammer. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Okie doke. So there's that. And here's one of our tin. And then we need these red alloys. Which is made from... Red alloy ingots. Uh, I think we want the uh, th uh, that one. Where is it? You have to smelt some things, I think. Um, we could also be going about this completely wrong, I think. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just clicking around. Um, hmm. There's another ingot, red alloy ingot. I think it's from yeah, Project Red. And that's not it. I swear there was another ingot. Um maybe we should continue this way. Okay, well. Hmm. See this this might be the problem. I don't think we can do this in a hmm. I don't know if we can do this. Maybe we can. Let's see. We can always try, I suppose. Um Come on, what's that? What's that recipe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want, uh... Oh, well, that's just coming from Alloy Nuggets. Well... Wait, is there, like, a, a dust, maybe? Oh, here. Uh, copper and redstone? Let's give that a try. Iron... Copper... And redstone. Yeah, I really like would want a if I could speak. <laughs> so we got copper and we got reds. Ah, there we go. How about that? <coughs> so we're gonna need uh, two red alloy wires, which is gonna require four plates and. So yeah, this this is kind of the the problem with Greg is it's just it's confusing what what you can and cannot make in in some of these machines. So yeah, let's see. Hmm.
Well, I guess we can go ahead and blow some redstone and some copper. I have plenty of it. And wow, those plates take a long time. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna want to keep this train going. Hello, next. Get those guys in there. So there's our two. And we want tin plates. And I have bronze plates in case we need them. And I really, really tried to clear out this table before starting because I knew we were going to need all the real estate we could get. So let's tin snip these. That's not tin. Hey, we got an. Oh, we need two. <laughs> oh, brother. Um, so what were we making? No, a steam turbine in and chips. Um, oh, no. Yeah, we do. Um, now, which, which one did it, was I making? Okay, this one. Um, yeah, we need two of them. So, uh, let's see. We need this. Now I gotta remember the recipe. Hey, I'm getting better already. So a tin plate. Oh, that's not what we want. That's not what we want. I. Uh, how did we make this? <laughs> oh man. Um. What is this called? It's one x tin. Okay, so now that's that's really annoying is when you have to go through that kind of thing. What, where in the crafting grid am I, do I need to place that? So here's two, four. Oh, we don't want those. We want these. All right. Good thing I had some foresight. And there we go. So those are two and and chips. And what next? Um, was it an electronic circuit? Yes. We need a steel plate in the middle and some copper wire, which is copper. And so we need. Oh, that's bronze. Uh, where did I? Oh, I only have bronze. I don't have copper. Um. Yeah, that's annoying. Um, yeah, I swear I had at least a couple. Yeah, here we go. But I guess we need to get some of that. Whoa! Did you just see that? What? I just clicked my copper plates on the forge hammer and it turned it to something else. Hmm. That might be a bug. <laughs> Hopefully I can use those for something. Uh, oh good, yes. So I think we need these. And achievement get. Hooray. Um, and we have plenty of rubber because that's been... You can see we're getting dangerously close to full. Uh, rubber bars. I think this recipe works. Of course not. Why would that work? Uh, you'd have to be a fool to think that would work. Uh, so we got, should we try the, what's the Greg Tech ones? Uh, rubber sheets, which is probably something I need to put in. Ooh. Well, if we had this plate mold, uh, we might be able to alloy smelt that, so let's go. Uh, and which? Oh, I need a mold which is made with. Uh, this, this, and that. There we go. And then I needed this where. Uh, 
mold. Let's just look up mold. Sometimes I wish you could get like a favorites or something here. Um, ah, there it is. So let's see if this works in the alloy smelter. Um, we want to take that out. I'm gonna put that in. Hey, fancy. All right. So let's. Uh, you're gonna probably want to make more of that, huh? And I thought I grabbed out a bunch. Yeah, here we go. Let's just do a batch. I know we need them. Alright, so back to our. What was it? 1x copper wire. 10, no. Ah. Uh. Yeah, you can you can see where this gets tedious. All right, so this is fine. Copper wire. Ooh, uh, I hope I made the. I hope that works too. <laughs> oh no, it doesn't. No, no, it doesn't. Um. And we we could have just used the rubber here. Um, because it's on this side that we want it. Well, we'll have to use that uh, some other time, I guess. Ah, that manning bag. That'll get me every time. Uh, there we go. We need six. And we are one step closer. Aha! Hey, our first complex Greg Tech thing, I'm a jigger. There we go. <laughs> we've, we've so far got one piece. Yay! Uh, so we need these bronze plates that I thoughtfully made up. And my wrench and hammer. And then, just moving on down the line here. Tin plates, tin ring. Tin rods, okay. And we have tin plates. So tin rods is of course not not what I thought it was apparently. Mm, a hammer. I that's odd. I don't know why you'd need this for iron but not for tin. So we need Um, well, that's a small gear. A broken recipe? Oh no, how about I actually dig all the way in? <laughs> oh man. Okay, well, we can, we can still do that. Uh, and I'm, I swear I'm trying to keep the episode, uh, to not being so long but I don't I don't think we're gonna make it <laughs> so there's a ring and we need more rods I believe before we waste tin let's just check okay we got the ring nope we just need tin plates good thing I checked and then we need all kinds of tools for this one. Uh, tin screw, tin bolts, tin rods. So yeah, we do need more tin rods. Uh, where is one, two? Uh, was it a hammer? No, it was a saw. Uh, no, it was it was a something else. Ah, ten volts. Hammer. Wrench. <laughs> what is it? Aha. Ten screw. All right. 
hammer file screwdriver, which I happen to have. Hammer, hammer, hammer. Rotor, and we needed another one of those, didn't we? Okay, and I did have more bolts. Or no, I had another rod. Uh, not hammer, it was file. It would make sense that you would have to cut it, not file it. I don't know why. Ah, yes, it would make sense that you have to cut it, only it's a saw. And then file is your screw. And we needed another rod. So many steps. Uh, no, it was the file. And then we were going to make a ring. Like such. And then we need the hammer and the file for a second rotor. All right. Moving along. I somehow think that we're, we're not... This isn't going to be as easy as I think. <laughs> or it seems, I suppose. Uh, was it 10? Yes, 10. That's not what we want. It was a tin plate, wasn't it? Tin plate and wire cutters. Ah. Oh boy, so many, so many different recipes. It's, man. Anyway, we do have plates. All right. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good here. I'm feeling good. Uh, and I didn't want to close all the way out. We might actually make this this steam turbine within this one episode. <laughs> oh God! Uh, and and part of this is just remembering what what all we needed here. So we need this tin cable. Let's move these out. We should probably clear that one. Our steel bunch of steel plates with a wrench so what I think I'll do is go ahead and, and make this one because yeah uh, this is this is taking a lot more than I would have ever anticipated I guess I should have anticipated that though <laughs> yeah. um, so we need two of these motors which is two tin cables and I'm gonna need more rubber plates which I have And if I had AE and could auto-craft this stuff, that would be awesome. Uh, so we need four tin cables, which is tin plates um, snipped. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like that. And... Um, iron rods which hmm do I have any iron plates oh you you just need iron ingots so yeah I can end a file I can sometimes remember things ah and then we need two um, charged guys which I think is a rod and redstone hmm let's see we need this magnetic iron oh we need to make a magnetic iron ingot which I think I thought there was a recipe like this is it maybe you put it in the alloy smelter I feel like you put it in the alloy smelter <laughs> oh no here we go um yeah see I'm not in I'm not completely crazy I guess we just needed one more all right we are on easy street now I I think let's see so all we need are these cables from copper. Okay. 
And we can we can do that. If we remember, I think we needed plates, didn't we? Yes, we did. Uh, which I had crafting up. Right here. I guess the plate just did that weird um, or dictionary thing that's seems to be common. One, two, three, four. Hey, we got a motor. And we've got two. At long last, we have a steam turbine. Hooray! Alright, so let's start... Hmm. Let's start against this wall, that wall, uh, this wall. How about that? Not that I don't think anyone cares. Um, so I need my wrench, my wrench, my wrench, my wrench, and hmm. okay. Let's clear out this. Now I wonder maybe we shouldn't maybe we shouldn't put this like that. Maybe we should do it like out here. Cuz I seem to remember we got to get somewhat complicated with this setup. And let's see if we can Hey, come on. So let's get our fluid conduits transfer in over here. I'm going to need to make up some more facades. And we want insert. Um, well, hopefully it doesn't it doesn't accept water because we've got we've got multiple fluids running in here, but you can't you can't get a steam container uh, very easily. Now I I could swear there was a way to put things into Ender IO filters from NEI, but I, I can't seem to find it. Um, we do have, maybe we could grab one of those steam tanks. It's, this is more of a safeguard, just in case it accepts other things, and back here is the back room, I guess. Um, but let's take that, let's see if it'll let's see if it'll put it in the filter. And if you shift left click, you can, you can get into that um, that UI. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Uh, and there we go. We have steam. So that should. Hmm. Shouldn't that be producing something? Well, maybe not. All right. So we have steam. So now we need to get start working towards some of the other machines so once I get those crafted up and I'm sure it'll be probably a day or two I don't know um, I'll be I'll be back and we'll we'll go ahead and set up uh, everything we need here um, so I shall return and we're back so here we go we got the bending machine that only took probably a half hour <laughs> But it works as advertised. One thing to note, you definitely need one of these integrated circuits. Um, <clears throat> it does say it in the recipe, but it kind of confuses me because, I don't know, why do you need that? But um, it's just made with one of those um, basic circuits that um, that we've been making. So, yeah, that works really well. We get plates pretty fast. Um, and it only takes one ingot, so we should be able to um, go a lot quicker, I think, with the Greg Tech stuff now. I think the next the next guy on our um, to-do list might be maybe a battery box, um, an electrolyzer we might need, but uh, yeah, let me let me go ahead and determine what we need next. I'll go ahead and make that up and then we'll come back and I'll place it down. Uh, so hopefully this can kinda just you can see what machine we're making in the order of progression and maybe we'll learn you know maybe we should have made that other machine first so 
Uh, guy number one, basic mending machine, and it's it's going to pay off because we just cut our ingot use in half. So I'll be I'll be back once we get the second machine in the series. All right, and we're back with our wire mill. So yeah, it's getting kind of tedious to make the wire to do the do all the stuffs. So I decided wire mill might be a good good way to do this. So and I've also set up kind of a, a poor man's automation here. Uh, so if we pop some copper in, this guy should start eating that up and spitting out ah spitting out wire. So I think it's it's you get two per one ingot maybe yeah. So there's six. I should actually just have it put it back in here. Uh, no, because then it might get it might get pulled out. So this is just the output chest for everything. So yeah, there's uh, there's number two, and it looks like it works on ingots. So I don't need I don't think I need the plates for this anymore, or at least not this piece of it anymore. So let's grab a bunch of tin, and we'll we'll use that to make some more tin cables um, boy that guy's that guy's pretty slow so I already made up some some plates so we're doing good on that um, I think the next one we need is going to definitely be I think the assembler because this will make our chips um, not that one this guy so this should make our uh, circuits let's see it would be probably the Greg Tech basic circuit board not that one basic electronic circuit so yeah assembler what do we do two in and chips that's not what we want hmm Basic circuit board. Hmm. <laughs> well, there is a way. Let's check the recipes. I swear this is what we wanted this one for. Uh, would a. Is there a way to tell what it's used in? So let's see. So we're making these chips, right? There's the assembler. That's definitely not what we want. That requires molten lead. I don't think that's what we want. Uh, molten soldering alloy. Hmm. hmm. Molten tin. Hmm. All right. Well. The uh, the guide I'm following here seems to indicate that you want a an assembling machine for something. Uh, so let me let me figure that out and maybe I'll get started on that and I'll be back with what uh, what we decided on and why. So uh, we'll see you again soon. All right, and we're back. So yeah, the assembling machine is going to take liquid fluid or uh, is going to take fluids and. In order to do that, we're going to need something, I think it's called a fluid, something basic fluid, whatever. Uh, not distillery, not heater, ah, basic fluid extractor. So in order to do the assembling machine, we're going to need this guy. So that's kind of a two-stepper. So I decided to go for some of the low-hanging fluid, not, or fruit. Um, basically what the lathe is going to do is make rods for us so if we pop in some iron for instance it's going to start processing that and spitting out rods so I can go ahead and stick some iron and steel in here and then I should end up with um, plenty of rods uh, the wire mill worked really well so I got two stacks of tin wire and two stacks of copper wire for one stack of each kind so ooh, and we get some iron dust which I guess we can combine back into iron I don't know why they just didn't make the recipe you know one to two like all the other ones but yeah we'll take it um, 
So next on the list, uh, we can either go for the assembly machine in that fluids, fluidizer or whatever it's called, or we can go for the uh, centrifuge and the um, electrolyzer and start working on getting batteries. Um, and for that we would need a battery buffer, I believe. Uh, Probably a low voltage battery buffer, I imagine, which isn't uh, isn't too hard to do. Um, so yeah, and we do need the centrifuge to process all those dusts we have as well. So, our mm, let's make. Hmm. What do we need for the centrifuge? Which one's going to be the easiest? Uh, you do basic centrifuge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. And then what's the? Mm hmm. Okay. So we need a lot of chips, right? So the assembly machine uh, might be our best route. Um, it looks like it might require fewer chips. And the, what was it, the fluid extractor. There's another two. That doesn't need any. That doesn't need any. All right, well, let's go with the uh, fluid uh, extractor route um, and get the whole chips part automated, and I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. So this is an interesting find. I um, wish I'd found that sooner, but if you make a mold casing and you put steel ingots in your alloy smelter, you get three of these... Um, of these refined iron casings instead of one steel plate for one of these uh, which is a terrible return <laughs> so this you could have I could have done right off the bat and that's going to get me a lot of these things for the CPU now I did make the um, the basic fluid extractor and the assembling machine um, basically you pop tin in here and pipe the fluid over here and you get uh, molten tin and then you can use that to make the um, these enand chips with refined iron casing and this uh, red alloy wire. You just pop it in there, and out come your your chips. So I have, uh, or I thought I had more of those making. Uh, no, apparently not. Whoops. Maybe I left some stuff back here. Uh, yeah, here we go. I've got tons of this stuff coming out, so that's great. Um, so I need to make these into wires with my wire mill. And I, I don't produce enough power to do all of this uh, at once. It just it doesn't work. <laughs> I can run one machine at a time, more or less. So this will turn this into wire. And then I can use that wire then to, to pop it in here. Um, should probably pipe this on the bottom, then I can set it in our chest up here to uh, combine those guys. Uh, so, I guess with all of this now, um, we're looking at the uh, centrifuge or electrolyzer. And I guess we need both anyway, so. <coughs> Basic electric furnace is not what we want. Electromagnetic separator is not what we want. Here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and make up this. I'm actually going to make up both the electrolyzer and the centrifuge, and then I'll be I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. So <clears throat> I went ahead and made up all the rest of the machines we need really to get into the electric age. 
Uh, I got the basic centrifuge, the electrolyzer, and the canning machine, and the low voltage battery buffer. So we need these two guys to make the, um, the battery alloy, and what I have in here is tetrahedrite dust. Um, and what that will produce is um, tiny piles of antimony, and that's what you really want is this, I, mean, I guess it's ant antimony, I don't know, uh, you know, the opposite of money. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, the tetrahedrite will make that. Now, a thing to note, um, don't put your tetrahedrite ores into the macerator. Uh, what that'll do is give you copper dust. Uh, you don't want that. Put your tetrahedrite ores into the hammer, and that'll actually crush the ores down into um, crushed tetrahedrite, then feed it back into the hammer again in order to get the tetrahedrite dust. Uh, so don't put it in the macerator. <laughs> um, another ore that's around there is Bitsumoth or something like that. I don't remember what it is, but that's, you could go take a look for that too. That'll work um, and get you more directly to the anti-money. Um, so I've got, I've got some of those made up. Now I think we need uh, lead maybe. Let's see. So we need some mm, batteries. Mm, we need these which is made from battery alloy dust yada 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 what do you need for that mm. come on where are you uh, hmm now I'm not entirely sure how to get to how to get here there from here. Uh, hmm. So we need we want uh, I think small battery holes to start off with, and I think we're making cad cadmium batteries because we need lithium dust which is made from mm, what is that made from hmm spudmunte or I guess is what <laughs> uh, I might actually have some of these ores actually uh, definitely some of that so what do we need to do for that? Can we maybe we can centrifuge it from this stuff? So I we could probably make that, but let's figure out how to make our I guess our battery casings first, right? Uh small battery hull, which is made from these plates <laughs> and is made from these ingots which is made from that dust hmm which is made from I don't know what if you macerate stuff uh, I, I swear I think I heard lead but lead dust but I'm not seeing that recipe. Do we? Uh, hmm. Packager, unpackager, lathe, uh, rock crusher. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I mean, the macerator would be the thing we have access to. Let's look through all of these. Now this is this is where things get irritating is trying to find what exactly you need for these various things. But I will say once you once you start getting down the recipes, it's Greg Tech's not so bad. Um, it's just a lot of tedious crafting which we can more or less eliminate with some sort of auto crafting stuff. 
<clears throat> like uh, applied energistics. But yeah, I have no clue how to make this battery alloy. Hmm. Well, maybe we get tiny piles from something. Lathe, rock crusher, shaped crafting, maybe? No. Macerate something? No. Um, let's see, maybe you get small piles of dust from something. Macerator? No. Not shaped crafting. Uh, okay, well, in the spirit of actually getting this episode done within a reasonable amount of time, I think maybe I might have to duck out, figure out how to make this, then come back and uh, reveal how it's done. Um, so, yeah, I'll be right back when we can get this these guys going. All right, we're back. So yeah, it was it was lead dust with the antimony dust, and you put it in the alloy smelter, and you get out the, um, the battery alloy ingots. And then I went over to my plate bender and made um, the alloy plates. Uh, I did have some of that Le leopoldite or whatever. So all you need to do with that is macerate it, and then you come over here and you centrifuge it, and you get tiny piles of lithium dust so I think we're just gonna skip the uh, sodium ones and go straight to the lithium I have enough for three already and I I made my autoclave because <laughs> I've been burning for that I think um, but this is still this is still processing on the the lepidite or whatever you call it making me lithium so yeah for the battery hulls now uh, let's see, we need that guy, so we want 10 cables and 2 plates. Um, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter where we do it, huh? Okay, so let's make up some of those, uh, and I have enough for 3 right now, so, uh, my crafting table is getting very messy. Um, and then we want our plates alright and then we can go to our canning machine and put our lit yep, and lithium in there do, 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 do. lithium batteries alright now I want to make sure that I don't just slap a bunch of batteries in here because I don't need things blowing up so I'm gonna have to rewire some of this stuff. I want, uh, I'm gonna want that battery box kind of, um, gating the power to these guys. So I'm gonna want to decouple the steam turbine, maybe, um, move it back a couple. Let's move it back a couple. And then I'm gonna need some bigger cables, I think, for, for connecting to the machines because this is going to be producing too many amps, I think. Uh, and all, yeah, all my stuff's gonna shut down. Yeah. Um, but you want to be careful of the amps and whatnot. They will, they will catch fire to cables. Um, we need our fluid conduits. And I think I made that not accept anything but steam, but. I don't think it will accept anything but steam. So let's insert like such and that should get our steam back in there. Now we want this to connect up to our battery buffer like so. Mm. How do I want to put this? think like that. Seems right. Let's drop a battery in here. And go. Do something. Why aren't you doing anything? Hmm. Seems to indicate it is. You can see it using steam. 
Oh, hey, there we go. All right. So if we go like this, how about that? All right. Now we want to. This should be producing 32 volts and three amps. So we need to uh, make sure we have cables to can support that many amps. Um. So let's take that out of here for a second, and we want. Mm, I think we want to go like this. That's going to make the tin. Uh, I want to insulate it. Okay, there we go. So this will support two amps. So let's just go ahead and see how far we get here. Uh, four amps. Let's just clear out another grid here. Eight amps. Basically, I want to make cables that's going to be able to support that entire that entire um, battery box. Sixteen. I think sixteen is the max for that. So yeah, we're going to need a lot more cable, huh? Oh well. Um, I have more. Here we go. depending on how we set this up. We, I'm probably going to want to make that a little more efficient on how that's set up. 16. So there's two cables. Like such. There we go. So let's uh, let's hook something up here. And uh, pray for no, no booms. Uh, so we need, actually, we need our wire cutters to get through that Greg Tech uh, wire. And let's see if we can fit in here. Hey, there we go. So this is going to lose two EUs per block so we want to try and rearrange some of this stuff well this is finished so that's good let's pick that up and I'm only going to go so far with this um, I'll probably rearrange a lot of this stuff between episodes um, let's be safe and disconnect all this stuff and I was going to insulate that cable wasn't I I think if you if you stand on uninsulated cable you die. So we don't we don't want to die. Oh no, was I supposed to insulate it earlier? Uh <clears throat> let's see. Hmm, doesn't look like you can insulate 16x. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, apparently we did, weren't supposed to do that earlier. Um, so let's let's pop this out one, like such. And those are those are going. And then we're going to let's take our plate bending machine, and you're going to be our first victim, which maybe isn't such a great idea. And let's. Mm. Please don't explode. <laughs> uh, it looks like. Looks like we have success. Hooray! Um, okay. So let's pop down. Hmm. Should we just make this kind of our resource saver? So I think in terms of, and I think we were going to kind of do like a, a post-mortem here and <clears throat> see what what things I think I should have probably made uh, first. Um, I'm leaning I'm leaning towards the assembler uh, just because those um, Enian chips they're they're not they're not fun. That uh, that red alloy is is a big one to 
because to make the plates it, it requires a long time in that plate bending machine to make the plates. Um, I know you could probably hammer some out but just being able to drop the wire in uh, from the wire mill is is a huge time saver and I think I think we did pretty good with our order um, just saving resources first before getting into some of this other stuff so you know you kind of use the machines one at a time um, it actually doesn't take too long to do that so I don't know I think we did uh, we did a good job with the order um, the order of things so <clears throat> don't not too many regrets <laughs> Uh, obviously you need a lot of resources, so there shouldn't be anything in these chests. And do I have? I don't have my dolly on hand. So we got the lathe, which we want, in this cluster, I suppose. Yeah, no power. No kidding. Uh, and I'm trying to do that with wire cutters. Not, not smart. Let's put this back into the bending machine. Oh, and these integrated circuits, once you get one of them, you need the screwdriver to set it to configuration one. Um, it'll tell you in NEI, but just for completeness, now we need, where's our wrench? Right here. Alrighty, and our lathe. That's electrolyzer. Where did our lathe go? Right here. And let's see, um, centrifuge, canning machine, electrolyzer. I think these three I want in one group. Um, the assembling machine and the fluid extractor are going to need to go together. So let's put, let's put our autoclave there, I suppose. I think you can power it when it's uh, positioned on top. I don't know. Um, we can certainly give it a try. Alright, so that, that's kind of one cluster. And I'll probably need to hook up some more basic steam turbines to the battery box here. So, let's see. What was I going to do? Ah, yes. Let's use our autoclave to turn some of this lapis dust into lapis. Because that's one of them I've been waiting for. Uh, hmm. Come on now. I, I wanted you to do this. Ah! There we go. So, autoclave? Water. Okay. Um. Well, my fluid ducts supply water. We should switch these two around, I guess. And do I have a water bucket? Mm, I don't know what other miscellaneous liquids I have around here. Maybe steam might go in there. Uh, let me store some things. And let's pull these guys around and kind of pray. <laughs> Here's our autoclave, and what's that going to get in there? Nothing. Oh, wonderful. Oh, good, water. I'll have to make sure I set that. Um, and now we can put our... What did we have here? The lathe. Here we go. Up there. And... Lapis. And it looks like it has power. That's a good thing. Wow, that's slow. <laughs> oh my. Alright. Well, um, I guess my next task is to actually find a better way to lay these guys out. Because uh, I want to try and conserve resources with these early ones. I don't know if maybe, maybe this is just the best thing to do, is cluster them like this. Um, but I also need to get you know inputs and outputs set up on these so hmm. I think that'll about do it we're well into our electrical age and you know I kinda hope you know some of my my troubles and revelations have helped you will help you out in 
getting these machines going. Uh, so yeah, I think we're we're going to do the electric blast furnace next episode. So I'm going to have to get things staged up and ready to go for that. And uh, you know, leave a like or subscribe, and have a good one, guys.